Hey guys, it's Joanne, and today we're going to solve the coding interview question called uh, Container with Most Water. It is commonly asked by Facebook and Amazon, obviously by other companies as well. It's labeled as a medium difficulty. You can find it on LeetCode. I'm going to leave the link in the description box. Now let's get straight into the problem. So the input for this problem is an array of integers, each representing the height of a line. And we want to find the two lines that together with the x-axis, form a container that can hold the most water. Now what they mean by the container that hold the most water is this. If we have these two lines, the amount of water that can be trapped between these two lines is equal to the area of this rectangle. In other words, is equal to the height of the shorter line multiplied by the distance between the lines. Now the height of the rectangle cannot be any higher. It, it can't be higher than the shorter line because if it was, the uh, water would leak out of this area here. So in other words, the way we solve this problem is we find the two lines that form the uh, largest rectangle according to this definition. Now let's look at an example. We have this array. This array will form this histogram. And the correct output for this histogram is uh, 49. So the brute force way of solving this problem would be to iterate over each pair of lines, uh, finding the area of the uh, container uh, that they form, and uh, keeping track of the maximum. So the code would look like this. We keep a variable for the max area. We iterate over each pair of lines with, this, uh, with these nested loops. We compute the area for the current pair of lines. As we said, it will be the minimum uh, of the two lines multiplied by the distance between them. Then we keep track of the maximum. So let's do a few iterations of this code just to uh, make sure that we really understand how it works. So we start with i pointing to the first um, uh, line and j pointing to the line just after i. We compute the area of the, of the container that they form. In this case, it is one times one, which is one. Let's write it down. And we keep track of the max area, which is one as well. Now we move j along and we compute the area for these two lines. In this case, it is this container, which is one times two, that is two, and the max area is two as well. And we keep moving j until we reach the end of the array. So now that we have reached the end of the array with j, we are done with our inner loop and uh, we uh, move i to the next line. j now points to the line right after i and we compute the areas again. So if we keep doing that all the way through, we're going to find that the maximum area is 49 and that will be the correct output. Now the time complexity for this approach would be O of n squared. Uh, because of these nested loops, the space complexity would be constant because we use a constant amount of extra space. We only have these two variables. So of course we can do better than the brute force uh, algorithm. We can uh, do that in uh, linear time. And the way we would do that is with the uh, two pointers approach. We're going to start with a left pointer pointing to the leftmost line and a right pointer pointing to the rightmost line. Then we compute the area between these two lines. In this case, it will be uh, 1 times 8, which is 8. Next thing we do is we move the pointer of the shorter line inwards. So in this case, 1 is uh, smaller than 7, so we move left pointer inwards. We again compute the area between those lines. In this case, it's 7 times 7, 49, and the maximum is 49. And we again move the pointer of the shorter line. Now it's the right pointer because it's pointed to 7, 7 is smaller than 8. We compute the area again. It's 3 times uh, 6, that's 18. Uh, the uh, maximum area stays the same and we move the pointer of the shoulder line. Again, it is the right pointer. Three is uh, smaller than eight. Compute 
uh, the area again. And we keep going. And at this point, uh, our pointers meet, which means that our loop is done and we have the correct output, which is 49. So I think it's pretty clear how this algorithm works. The thing that is not obvious is why it works, right? So the intuition for this approach comes from the fact that we have absolutely nothing to gain for moving the pointer of the um, taller line instead of that of the shorter line. Let's think what would happen if I was to do that. So that's why I have this example. And we start with the left pointer pointing to the leftmost position and the right pointer pointing to the rightmost position. We compute the area of their container, which is uh, three times eight. And according to our algorithm, uh, we now supposed to uh, move this right pointer because it is pointing to the shorter line. Three is less than five. But what would happen if I was to move uh, the left pointer? So our new rectangle is this. And obviously the width is going to get smaller because we're moving the lines closer together, but that's going to happen either way, right? Um, also, what would happen is we're, we're not going to have a chance at overcoming this loss in width because the height is not going to increase. So notice that even though this line is uh, taller than the one we previously had, the height of the rectangle did not change. And that's because the height of the rectangle is always limited by the shorter line. And uh, because three was shorter than five, the height has no uh, way of increasing. So the width is smaller, the height is not increasing. So our new rectangle is always going to be smaller than the one we already had, uh, meaning nothing to gain. On the other hand, if I was to move uh, the right pointer, the pointer of the uh, shorter line, the width will decrease just the same. But now we do have a shot at overcoming this loss in width because if the uh, new line is taller than the one we had, the height of the rectangle can increase. And that means we have something to gain. So hopefully it is clear now that by moving the pointer of the shorter line, we are making the better decision for the next iteration. But are we being too short-sighted? Is it possible that while we do make the locally optimal um, decision at each step, we might miss the globally optimal solution somewhere down the line? And this is definitely not a trivial point that we're making here. Uh, in an interview, I don't think that anyone is going to ask you to provide a proper formal mathematical proof. Uh, but I do think you need to be able to explain uh, why you think this algorithm actually works. So let's do that. And let's say that this algorithm didn't work. We ran it to completion and we returned the area between some pair of lines that are not the optimal pair of lines. And let's call the optimal pair of lines optimal uh, left and optimal right. So now since we start from the outermost positions and move inwards, there has to have been a point where either the left pointer has reached the optimal left or the right pointer has reached the optimal right. One of these options had to have happened before the other. So let's assume the right pointer has reached the optimal right before the uh, left pointer has reached the optimal left. So we are now at the point where the right pointer is pointing to the optimal right and the left pointer has not reached the optimal left yet. Now we haven't found the optimal pair. That means that at some point, this right pointer had to have moved uh, inwards before uh, the left pointer pointed to opt left. Otherwise we would have found it. So that means that at some point, uh, the uh, left pointer was pointing to a line that is taller than the one that is pointed to by right. Otherwise, uh, the right pointer would not have moved inwards. So in this case, where this line is taller than the optimal right, we can argue that this pair is actually a better pair than the optimal pair. Basically, we argue that this rectangle is always going to be larger than this rectangle. Now, if the optimal left is a line that is uh, shorter than this line, then that would be obvious because this rectangle is not as wide and it's also not as tall. So that is obvious. But what if the optimal left was higher than this line? Well, in this case, our rectangle would be this, which is still smaller than uh, the blue rectangle because it is again not as wide and it has the same height. And why does it have the same height? Because the height is limited by opt right, which we already said that it is uh, shorter than this line here. So either way, the uh, rectangle between these two lines is always going to be larger than the rectangle between these two lines. 
And this contradicts the assumption that we've missed the optimal pair, meaning we couldn't have possibly missed the optimal pair, so the algorithm must work. Okay, so that is it for this video. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.